G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Way Photography. In this tutorial, I've got something really special, uh, something that I don't think is known by a lot of people. It's something called emboss sharpening, which can give your images a great sense of three-dimensionality that will really make the detail jump off the page when you print it. Now, it works particularly well with aerials and abstracts and these kind of things, but it can also work on landscape images as well. Let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so I've got this aerial image from Lake Eyre, and if we zoom in, you can see the detail's quite sharp. You know, it's quite nice, but it could do with a little bit more three-dimensionality. You know, I'd like these details to show a little bit more of the bumps and dips of the landscape, uh, which it's not really showing right now, uh, aerial photography has a habit of doing that, particularly as it gets later in the day and the light gets more, I suppose, even across the landscape. In the early morning and late afternoon, you'll get a lot more dimensionality. And that's exactly what this particular technique is going to bring to this image. So let's take a look how it's done. It's quite simple. Normally I would do it at the end of the workflow as part of a sharpening print preparation. So on my flat file, I would duplicate the background layer, Command or Control J. You can name that emboss sharpening if you like. Move up to the filter menu. We come down to stylize and emboss. And let me just zoom in and you'll see straight away what's happening here. You can see that dimensionality and that embossed effect which is happening here. Now, pretty much I leave the amount turned up to 100, but you can have a play around with that. And then I just adjust the height and the angle. Now the height, on this image we're going to go super extreme. I would rarely go up to as high as eight. In fact, normally, you know, two, three or four is plenty enough, okay? But for this example, to make it really jump off the page uh, for the benefit of the screens on the internet, we'll max it out at, at what I think eight is probably the maximum, okay? And this may have something to do with the resolution of your image too. Um, I would suggest images that are slightly lower in resolution may not be able to handle as much as 8 pixels either. Okay, and then the key is to spin around until you, because if you see from up here, see these upper details are now showing that they're in a hole, um, and I actually want them to be standing up like that, because I believe, to me, it feels like this image, the top section of the image should be above the next section if you like, okay? So I want them sitting up in that manner. And it's just a case of flicking around until we find something that we're happy with. It's not too bad, that's quite nice there. What if we come straight up like that? It's not too bad either. From one of these 45 degree angles on the bottom looks best. Now, if you do have a light source already in your image, you can also follow that. So if the light was coming in from the left, and that's what this emboss filter is now doing, you can see the light is on the left and the shadows are on the right. So copy whatever light source you have. This particular image didn't really have much of a light source though, but we'll run with that and see how that goes. Click OK. Now, you can see there's some color artifacting in here, in this gray layer, and we don't really want that because we're going to now um, switch it over to overlay blend mode and that color will come through. So I prefer that color wasn't there. So we'll move up to the image mode and choose adjustments and black and white. Now this is called a destructive adjustment because it's not reversible, but in this layer, it's not that big a deal because we don't want to be able to reverse it anyway. And now let's change the blend mode over to overlay. Or you can use soft light too. It gives you a slightly softer, less aggressive uh, application of this technique. But let's go with overlay. And let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, and you'll see before. Okay, all that detail relatively flat on the page. And then after, all absolutely standing up. It's got this incredible three-dimensionality right throughout the entire image, in fact. Look at all those bumps and dips and grooves. Now keep in mind, as I said, for a standard landscape photo, you might only want to apply this at maybe one or two pixels. 
Um, for an aerial photo or an abstract, you can get away with the higher ones, five or six, but I still usually only go three or four anyway. Um, but you can see here how incredible it is on these abstract aerials, the way it just makes that detail jump off the page. So that's all there really is to it, the emboss sharpening technique to really pull out that detail. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.